Welcome back to our Jeep conversion project. We are making the first ever all-electric Gilmore Girls Jeep. Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. We are in our new location in this beautiful workshop in Waukesha, Wisconsin. We started a collaboration with Darren, who is the owner of Performance Off-Road. Darren is working on Jeeps and other off-road vehicles for many, many years, and now he is very excited to get into the electric vehicle space together with us. We built our first prototype battery module that will go into this Jeep. Let me show you how we built this. In this video, you will learn why we build our own module when there is stock modules like that. We will show you the entire process of how to get from the stock module to a reconfigured one. We show you what we did to make sure that the cells that we are reusing are still good enough. And how to hook up the module with the battery management system. So this is a LG Cam module that we got from a scrap Mustang Mach-E. 12 modules like that will give you a 400 volt system. In our Jeep, we don't have space for 12 modules. So we need to double the voltage that we get per module. This is why we disassemble the whole module into individual cell slices and reconfigure that to go from 30 volts to more than 60 volts. We did this by changing it from a 4P 8S system to 2P 16S. Each of those slices has two cells in parallel. Two of those slices are in parallel, making up the 4P. And then there's eight serial connections making up the 4P 8S. In contrast, for our new module, every cell slice is in a serious connection with the next one. So let me show you how we get from this, to this, to this. Okay, now I want to show you how we're breaking this module down into those individual cell slices. It took us quite some time to figure out how to do that in a safe way, but finally we found a method that works. Here you can see the bus bar connection of our 4P8S system. So you can see different colored tabs. Some of them are spot welded, some of them are laser welded. The spot welded ones are the positive tabs, the laser welded ones are the negative tabs. So if you look closely, you can actually see two tabs folded over for one of those slices. So the first thing we have to do is remove the protective cover that's covering up all the bus bars. And then we can see all the bus bars that are connecting all of the cells in parallel and in series. We need to make a number of cuts on these bus bars. So we want to cut them as close to these mounting points as possible. And for later, we want to make these bus bar pieces as short as possible because it makes mounting them back together in the reconfigured module much easier. Let's get cutting. One of the first things that I do is I cut out the middle sections of all of the bus bars. This breaks up the series connections between all of the cell pairs and makes it a little bit safer for the disconnection of all of the cells. So in the prototype pack, we used the thermal camera to see how hot the bus bars were getting when I was doing the cutting. And actually they didn't get very warm at all, so I'm not so nervous about making two cuts right next to each other, but I still try to jump on bus bars to just reduce the amount of heat that each bus bar sees. Okay, so now we've cut all the bus bars, so all the cell pairs are separated from all of the other ones. Obviously, you can see there's lots of copper dust everywhere. Then we're gonna remove all these plastic rivets, which are holding the bus bars to this plastic carrier. And then we'll remove this plastic carrier. So for the next part, we need to bend the tabs away from this plastic carrier and make them all straight. So now what we need to do is we need to make a cut from the opening where the cells come through the plastic carrier up to the top part here where we made the cut earlier. If you do that for both sides, this is what you end up with. This is how it looks like right now, and now we can really start taking things apart. First of all, we take apart this end plate here. And then, as you can see, we can really take out every individual cell. 
you can see here that between each of those cell pairs we have a compression pad in between. This is because pouch cells tend to swell so they expand in volume over time due to aging and this is what compensates for that. So the module is flipped over right now actually. So these little fins here that you can see here are cooling and heating fins. So there's an aluminum plate in between those cell pairs. And this is also the part that we will use as a contact area to our cooling plate. So now we have the 16 cell pairs, 32 cells and two end plates. The challenging thing for us is we don't know how old these cells are or what happened to them. This is why we are actually testing each individual cell pair. We are doing capacity checks and internal resistance tests to check if they're still good. Welcome to our battery test lab. This is where we are charging and discharging our battery cells in a very safe way. The first thing we're doing is charging the cells to 100% state of charge. So this is a ISDT X16 charger. The reason we got this one is because it has two channels and it also has the capability to go up to 18S. So later when we build up our modules, we can actually use this charger also for the full modules. So once we charge the cells up to full charge, which is 4.2 volts, we then use an electronic load to discharge the cells down to three volts in order to determine the capacity of the cells. Once your test is done, you get a battery capacity discharge test report. So that's a very typical shape for a lithium ion battery cell with an NMC cathode. 143.8 amp hours, so almost 100%. So, and you're recording all of this in an Excel file, and then the idea is then to build the modules all up based on the capacities of the cells. Yes, so this is our wonderful Excel file with all the cell tests we did so far. You can see some colors here. The green ones are good cells, the red ones are not so good. We will go into detail about how we test cells and how do we identify which ones are really the good ones and bad ones and show you some data analytics in some upcoming videos. So in also in one of those videos, we're going to be having our National Instruments test system set up so we can do some pulse tests and some other deeper analysis than what is available in this software. So now it's time to put the module together. Let's stack the cells. So we have to start stacking the cells. We have to put the three temperature sensors in where we want, and then we'll compress everything with the compression pads, of course, cleaning off everything while we do it. Once the whole module is back together, then we make all the electrical connections. Let's start. So that's our clean room gears. Here we want our battery. Temperature sensor. Temperature sensor, yep. Like this? Yep. Very professional. Very professional. Somewhere at LG, somebody's like, no! <laughs> Second temperature sensor is in the middle of the module. The middle should be the hottest. But I can see some dirt on it, so it's good that we do yes. that. So then we'll lay this down on the table, then we'll compress it with a clamp, and then tighten it down with the compression rods. Let's see how that goes. Did I get Ooh, it? Perfect, I think so. That's good, I think. Yes! Hey, only two hours later, and we have the first fixed the module. module. Just so I will now make all the little wires that we need for our battery module. That's one of my most favorite tasks. I love making wires and look at all these beautiful colors here. Every connection here will get a different color. We will be measuring 16 cell voltages as well as three temperatures. All that will be connected to the battery management system by AEM. So each little pin here will measure either a voltage signal or a temperature. That will be the cable for voltage number one. That will be my system so I will be able to remember which color is which voltage. So now we do the bus bar connections. And we have a very unique method. We investigated three options, but we found this one to be the easiest for us. Yes, and we think it has the best connection because we're connecting the two stock bus bars together. So we're not making an intermediate connection in between. Plus it's the fastest and easiest way to do it. Yeah. So we're connecting all these cells in series. First thing that we need to do is clean off all the bus bars. 
Second, we put a conductive grease on the bus bars. Third, we fold them over like this, so the bus bars are touching each other. And then we're using a rivet gun to make these connections. Let's mount the battery management system. Okay, so we got the BMS mounted now here in the front and the next step that we need to do now is connect all the little wires from the cell voltages to the socket here. For that, we're following the instruction manual by AEM. It tells you exactly which wire has to go into which pins. These are the sockets that we need to use. It's very important to have the correct crimping tool because you really have to make sure that First of all, that it crimps around the wire that's inside, but then it also crimps around the insulation. Electrical engineering for beginners. So now all the voltage sense lines are done, mm -hmm. and now we're doing the temperature sensors. These are going into 19 and 27. So now we're going to test all of the pins and make sure that they're all in the right location. That one. one. That was one. That's four volts. Yes. Two. 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 Eight and a half. Yeah. Three. And 18 is 66. Yes. So all of the pins from all of the cells are now connected to the connector. All we have to do is add the CAN connection wires to this connector and connect all the BMSs up once we have all the battery modules done and we will have our battery pack. Yippee! So that's it, that's all you need to do in order to reconfigure this stock module into the reconfigured modules that we're gonna be using in our Jeep. So repurposing used battery modules is possible, but it's a lot of effort. If I look into my crystal ball into the future, I'm seeing lots of grinding bus bars ahead of me because we have six more of these modules to make and we have a very short period of time because we're going to SEMA! Pressure yeah. is on. Pressure is on. In some upcoming videos, we're gonna talk about connecting the AEM BMS to the AEM VCU. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about our test system and what we're doing there. So please come on back and join us for those videos. Bye!